So that brings us to number four on our list. Incorrect positioning when turning right at junctions. So the first sub point is positioning in the left hand lane when turning right at a roundabout. It says when you need to turn right at a roundabout you use the left hand lane when it's not appropriate and continue around the roundabout in that lane. And that causes confusion to the following vehicles. So again, do we teach them routines? That generally, as a guide, if it's 12 o'clock or before, left hand lane. If it's after 12, right hand lane, unless the road markings say different. Now there are, like with everything, exemptions to that rule. Like we mentioned earlier, there's one in Telford where you can go right fourth exit from the left hand lane. But that's marked. So generally, do we get our pupils in the habit of knowing if we're going right at a roundabout, it's right hand lane. Sometimes the trouble is, if we don't teach the 12 o'clock method, the question can be, where does right start? What lane? How do I know? What do you mean? Is it at the three o'clock position, four, five o'clock? Where does right start? So we want to give them a guide. As we said, there's always exemptions to it, like there is with every rule of driving. There's always something that might mean we can't do it that way. And roundabouts are no different. But generally, can we teach them that right will always be right hand lane unless the road markings say otherwise? And as we mentioned in the points earlier, if we are in the left lane and we realise, oh no, he said go right third exit and I'm in the left lane, just go left no big deal we'll take go straight ahead second exit if it allows you to but with the ADI part two do we find ourselves doing that and having to hurry up because you can see the rest of the traffic is in the right hand lane to come around and you're thinking I need to get out of their way this is where self-assessment on the ADI part two comes in or just video it, get a dash cam. Just video your route and then watch it back and think, am I in the correct lane at this roundabout? The second sub point, obstructing traffic when you wait to turn right. It says when you want to turn right into a minor road, you position your car too far to the left while you wait for oncoming traffic to clear. This causes delays for following traffic where it was wide enough for the traffic to pass you on the left. Again, that comes down to reference points. Do we show them when we're turning right where the center white line should be on our dashboard so that we know the correct positioning? Because again, sometimes they have the 40 foot lorry syndrome to think right i'm turning right i need to now swerve to the left to do it and you say to them but as a pedestrian if you're walking around that corner on the footpath do you walk out into the road and then walk around to the right no so why are we doing it in the car as a pedestrian you would walk in a straight line and when the pavement turned right you'd go right with it in the car we drive in a straight line till it's time to turn and we're level with that centre white line. So we come up straight and then turn right. So we need to be closer. So again, this is where the reference point, the focal point comes in. Does the pupil know it? So on the ADI part three, is this something that your pupils do? Do you notice them coming closer to the left curb on an approach to turn right? 
we can look and assess and think, yes, actually, I do have a pupil that does that. So do they have a reference point? Do they have a focal point? Get them in the position, then ask them, where does that white line meet the dashboard? Because again, one of the biggest problems, and you see so many driving instructors on YouTube videos doing it, and they'll say, we'll show you how to do this maneuver or, or whatever it is. And they say, so what you do, you come up and you wait till your shoulder is in the middle or the white line is in the middle of the door. That's great if you're their height, but if your chair is further forward, if your chair is further back, then that focal point doesn't work. So what you need to do is get them in the position that's correct on a quiet road, stop, and then say, so now look at the center white line, follow it back to our car. Where does it meet our dashboard? Oh, just in the bottom right-hand corner of the windscreen. Great. So that's where we want to have it every time we turn right, as long as it's safe to and there's no other reason, like traffic obstructing the road so other cars are coming around, a larger vehicle coming around so we need to stay to the left. That's fine. But if it is clear, if it is safe to, we want to have that white line in that position on the dashboard. And again, with the ADI part two, if you can video yourself, even getting a screen mount and putting your phone on it and just recording yourself for half an hour, then watch it back. Is this something that you do? Do you notice the car drifting to the left? Because it's the fourth most common reason that people fail their driving test. The final sub point, when you want to turn right at the end of the road, so this is emerging right at a T-junction, you incorrectly position to the left. When you reach the end of a wide road with no road markings, you position in the left, even though you're actually turning right. So again, just the width of the ju uh, junction, where the double broken white lines end, and the single white line begins, that's our center point for the road. So we want to be as close as we can to the end of those double white lines because there might not be any white lines on approach, center white line on approach, but very often there is the double broken white line on our side and the single white line, broken white line on the other side. So we can use that, but even if it's an unmarked junction, we can judge where the center point is and stay towards it. We don't want to be by the left hand curb because it says if it's a wide road. So if it is a wide road, how does your pupil know what the position is? And again, do you, if you're on the part three, the standards check, do you have any junctions like this that they might come across? Can you pull them up? Just sit there for five minutes and discuss it. So if you came down to this junction, Chris, and the examiner asked you to turn right, or I asked you to turn right, where would you position? Oh, just down there by that left curb. Ah, what could be the problem with that? Do you have any junctions like that on your ADI part two? Again, by knowing that, makes you more likely to pass the part two because you're not going to make this very common mistake. So that brings us to the top three reasons for failing the driving test. So the third reason, third most common reason, not moving off safely. What does that include? Well, it means moving off from behind a parked vehicle into the path of an approaching vehicle when you move off from behind a parked vehicle, you check your mirrors and blind spot, but still move off into the path of an approaching vehicle. This causes the vehicle to significantly slow down. So this can be from either direction. Um, so when you're moving out from behind a parked vehicle, 
is there something coming up but you're on a 40 road it can be you're on a 30 road but he's just razzing it down the road does the pupil still go to pull out on the part three if the vehicle's approaching from the front again does the pupil peep and creep to see if it's clear to go or do they just check the mirrors the blind spot go yeah yeah it's clear and then suddenly there's a car heading towards us so again we can get them to think in advance for the part three can you see around this vehicle chris not properly no can you see what's coming towards us no so would it be a good idea to signal yes and then what's our speed gonna be dead slow yeah just think if you were a pedestrian walking around this vehicle would you just walk out or would you stick your head around the corner, see if it's clear, then go, oh, I'd stick my head around the corner, yeah. That's what we want to do in the car. For the part two, has that ever happened to us, that you go to pull off and suddenly there's a car coming, so you have to jam the brake on from either behind you or in front of you? That's what we want to do. Anticipation what if what if there is a car coming what if there's a wide lorry what if there's a car parked on the right side of the road that lorry's coming around on my side of the road we can't always see past parked vehicles or if it is a vehicle you can see through like a car do you get the pupil to look through the windscreens of the vehicle in front can we see anything coming through that car oh yeah can see a car coming the other way so is it safe to pull out at this point no that's it the second sub point repeatedly moving off from the side of the road with no blind spot checks this again is something that they do on lessons and the amount of adi part three trainees who are not looking at the pupil they will sit there the pupils next to them, they will sit there and go, okay, check your mirrors, check your blind spot. So the pupil checks the centre mirror, goes to drive off. For the part three, you need to be looking at your pupil. Whenever you expect your pupil to do something, whenever you're telling your pupil to do something, you need to be looking at them to make sure they're actually doing it. So check your mirrors and blind spot. Yeah, yeah, stop, stop, stop. So check this center mirror, check the right mirror, check over your shoulder. Is it clear? Good, well done. What's the problem if we don't check that shoulder, Chris? The blind spot? Oh, I don't know. Nobody's ever told me. Or I can't remember, you mentioned it the other week, didn't you? Are we looking at our pupils for part three, for the standards check? But for the part two, is that something that you do? Do you check the blind spot? The, there's a myth, and it, it is a myth, that you need to check your left blind spot. That is just total rubbish. Whatever's in your left blind spot is off to the left side of your car. So if that's your car, your blind spot is kind of here, which makes no difference to you driving off. If you're on a busy high street, because we sometimes get pupils, uh, trainees, that say, no, no, I need to check left blind spot, left mirror. For what? People? Well, there are people there, what are you gonna do? You, you're not gonna move. So we're, we deliberately park on busy high streets where there are just tons of pedestrians. There are people in the blind spot, what are you gonna do? Well. I'm going to drive off so it makes no difference what's there the only thing that affects you is whatever is in front of you now you've got two pillars on the front of your windscreen which are known as a pillars 
they're blind spots you need to check nobody's about to walk in front of you you need to check over the right shoulder you need to check just to make sure that the the front pillar on the right hand side of your windscreen can hide cars and motorbikes coming out of driveways can hide people walking across those are your blind spots not your left mirror not your left blind spot that makes no difference it in how long have we been doing this longer than i care to remember but about 20 years and ask yourself if you're taking pupils for test for the part three for the standards check when was the last time you had a pupil marked down for not checking the left blind spot before moving off i'll give you the answer never 20 years of doing this we have never once taught this because it, it's only been introduced by the big companies for some reason why is beyond me it's not something that the driving the essential skills shows pictures like the highway code does i think of looking over your right shoulder nowhere does it say left shoulder and if somebody is on your left mirror if somebody is in your left mirror that means that they're behind you and to the side of you how does that stop you driving off when i turn right do you want me to check the left mirror and left blind spot no because it bears no resemblance to what i'm about to do what i do need to do is check the right mirror so blind spots just means realistically in front to the side that pillar at the side the pillar on the right is that clear then over your right shoulder which is your mirrors blind spot then go 20 years we've never taught this and we have pupils pass the driving test and get zero faults we have people pass the part two we've had perhaps five ten zero clean sheets many many ones and twos because they seem to be quite tight with the, the clean sheets they'll get one minor but nobody's ever been marked down for not checking the left mirror and left blind spot before driving off in 20 years of doing part three audit training audit trainer training doing our own personal standards check which includes moving off and stopping because whatever you do you need to pull them up at points then if they go to pull off not once not once has any examiner senior examiner or assessor said how come you don't get them to check the left blind spot and left mirror and i should imagine if you take your pupils for tests you've never had that either an examiner say they need to check the left blind spot before they pull away at the side of the road but what they do fail them for is not checking the right shoulder the right blind spot because that's the important one and that's my little rant over so just bear in mind that's all it is not checking the blind spots front and over to the right because those front pillars do hide them and again in the essential skills it shows the picture we'll put it up of the blind spot actually hiding an approaching car so if it's going to hide a car it can hide a cyclist an e-bike an e-scooter so that's why it's checking ground and over the right shoulder before moving off so for your part two is that something that you do get used to pom the routine for part two pom preparation into first gear get the bike point observation checking in front the mirrors and over the shoulder then move but it is so common i mean this is the third most popular reason people fail the test for not checking
the blind spot over their right shoulder. The third sub point, pulling off from the right hand side of the road, causing an oncoming vehicle to slow or stop. So that's the manoeuvre where you pull up on the right, reverse back to car lengths, and then when it's safe to drive on. Well, that's pulling up and then going to pull off back into the left-hand lane and causing someone to slow down or stop. That, again, is because pupils don't always look ahead. They're more focused on checking the left blind spot and they go, yeah, 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 we can go. But in the meantime, something's coming. Um, it can also mean vice versa, that they're checking ahead. They go, oh, it is clear, but they forget to check that blind spot. And as it says, this causes the approaching vehicle from behind to severely slow down or stop. So the gap just isn't big enough They've perhaps just looked in the left mirror. And remember, the left mirror makes things look further away than they actually are. And then they've pulled out in front of it. The final bullet point on this point is not making any rear observations when moving off following an emergency stop. After doing the emergency stop, you move off without any rear observations, having been stationary in the lane for some, or in the middle of the lane for some time. Now, this is the point where you do check the left blind spot and left mirror, because you've performed an emergency stop. You didn't intend to stop there, so you're in the middle of the lane, which means now the space up the left of you for motorbikes, e-scooters, bicycles, anything to get past. So therefore, you do have to check the left blind spot, left mirror, is anything there, is anything approaching? Just like you need to check the left blind spot when you move off after doing pull up on the right, because vehicles can now come up at the side of you. When you're parked, nothing is gonna be at the side of you. Whatever's there is gonna be on the pavement, which isn't an issue. With the emergency stop, it's gonna be in your lane coming up the side of you. So left blind spot, left mirror, center mirror. That gives the most accurate picture of what's approaching and how close it is. Then right mirror, right blind spot, then move off. But with your pupils, very often, they're that worried about holding up traffic that they'll just go, okay, let's go. And they don't check. Again, are you watching your pupil for the ADI part three? Is your pupil just swinging the head around? Yeah, let's go. No, 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 stop, wait. You need to actually look and assess, oh, there is a car coming. How far away is it? Oh man, he's massive boy, let's go. There is a car coming, man, he looks late for work. He's doing about 50 down this road. Then stop there, wait with the brake on, and we tell people, even if they put the handbrake on, keep the foot brake on. That shows everyone, look, I'm not moving. Because as soon as those brake lights come on, some uh, come off, sometimes the people behind think you're about to drive off. So we always recommend just keep the clutch down, put the handbrake on, foot on the brake. Everyone knows you're not moving. They'll go around you. Then you can look and then go but those observations. So again, for the part two, is that something we do? Do we do the emergency stop, go great, first gear, let's go. That's not the point. You're being tested on how safe you're gonna be. So after the emergency stop, left blind spot, left mirror, center mirror, ahead, right mirror, right blind spot, then if it's safe, go just a full 360 degree observation. So that brings us then to the second most common reason for failing the driving test, not using mirrors correctly 
when changing direction. So our first sub point, not using mirrors when exiting a roundabout. It says you need to take the right hand exit on a large multi-lane roundabout. When you move from the right hand lane to the left lane to exit it, you make no rear or passenger side observations or mirror checks. So again, do we check the center and left mirror before changing lanes? If we've kept a check on what's happening as we go round, the last thing that you need to do is check the blind spot because the blind spot is the point further behind the car than the mirrors show. So it shouldn't really affect you. You should be knowing what's there by your observations before. So are we checking on the passenger side, the center mirror, the left mirror? Can we look to the left if we think there's someone there? This is very often what doesn't happen. People will just check the center mirror and come off. Well, it's not what's behind us that's the problem. It's what's at the side of us that's going to be the problem. It's not what's behind us. Because if you're coming round and the car is there, you're going to move across. It doesn't matter. It's when the car is there that you're going to have the problem. But again, for the part three, are you checking that your pupils are doing MSPSGL? Mirrors, then signal, then position. Or are they already moving across and just checking the center mirror? It's not enough. For the part two, are we doing that in our driving? Do you go, right, I need exit number three, so number one, number two, so now mirrors, signal position that's what we need to be doing remember according to the essential skills especially for adi part two mirrors should become or should come before any change of speed or direction the key word is before not once you're going left not once you're going right before you do that should be mirrors then signal, then position. For the ADI part three and standards check, are our pupils doing that? Or as we said, are they already going across by the time they check that mirror? The second sub point, causing a vehicle to slow when changing lanes on a dual carriageway. You're on a dual carriageway, you check your mirrors when changing lanes, but there's a vehicle approaching in the lane you want to move into and you start to change lanes anyway, causing the approaching vehicle to slow down. So really it's assessing what's in the mirrors. So for the ADI part two, is this something we've done? We've moved across and suddenly the lights are blaring or the horn is going. For the part three, is this something that you've practiced with your pupils? To just stay in the left lane and as cars approach, get them to look in their mirrors. Would you go across now? No. What about now? Yes. How about with this car? Yes. Really? No. Get them to assess gaps. Again, very often, it can be that they need to get used to what they're seeing in the side mirror. So the side mirror, you can always split into three. Again, we'll put the picture up and say, if they're in this first section closest to the car, we can go. If they're in the second section, the middle bit, we need to use more caution. And if they're in going from the middle to the furthest bit on the right, we can't go we can give them reference points, focal points to help them. Give them imaginary situations where you're just, if you're in that left lane and it's clear and they're not confident, you can say to them, look, tell you what, I'll put my hand on the wheel just to steady us and control us. You just have a look in that mirror. Would you go now? Let them practice it. 
because very often when they're in full control you're coming down a slip road they've got cars coming up they're just panicking uh, and they don't know when is the best time to go that's why this is the second most common reason people fail their tests they go when they shouldn't for the part three are we giving them reference points so they know when to go can we help them with practice so that they can actually practice when they're not stressed and coming down the slip road trying to get up to the speed limit worrying they're going to crash into the vehicle next to them and then as we said for the part two just making sure this is something we don't do the next point trying to change lane on a roundabout when a vehicle is directly alongside so again that's the importance of the center and the left mirror and keeping an eye on it um, it could be especially for the part three that they're coming around the roundabout really slowly and therefore the vehicles are just starting to undertake them um, so again how would you react to that can you say to them well just keep your right signal on follow it all the way around we'll come off and if nothing else go off at the next exit and then we can turn around come back what is the cause of it is it the fact they're just going slowly is it the fact that they're doing it in the rush hour and everyone now is in a rush to get to Tesco's and buy fish fingers or go and get the barbecue because the sun's come out but they're not at that standard help them practice it how would I deal with this so if it comes to test and there's somebody there how do I deal with it but also by getting them used to checking the mirrors they'd be able to see that that vehicle try again they'd be able to see that that vehicle was coming up the inside and so they could then take preemptive action because it says trying to change lane with the vehicle alongside so the vehicle's there but the pupil has no idea that it's there and is still going to move across into that lane anyway so first of all what's the cause of it are they coming around too slow bigger roundabout the wider it is the faster generally we can go is it on a 40 or 50 or 60 mile an hour road so we can definitely go quicker is it the fact they're not checking their mirrors till the last second so we want exit number three Chris and they go one two mirrors and signal and position oh, it's too late then you need to look and assess and decide before you get there wow he's coming up really quick I tell you what I'll just go around and do this again but for part two again is that something that we do that we hear the horn going off at the vehicle at the side and think wow where did he come from if we did that would be an automatic fail it means we're not ready for the part two test so again just getting them to look and assess further ahead will help them for the part three the standards check it will help us as well on the part two and think well even on the part two if that happens how do I deal with it what would I do because it's no issue to just carry on round or go off at the wrong exit even on the part two because you're keeping everybody safe that brings us to our final subheading then exiting a roundabout without checking the mirror so they're all kind of related when you exit a roundabout you don't check your mirrors and cut across the path of a closely following vehicle to the left hand side so it's not at the side of you but it is quite close to you again like we've just said what is the cause is it the fact I'm going too slow is it the rush hour so everyone's getting quicker so I should be going quicker is it the fact that I'm checking the mirrors too late that I'm not able to do mirrors signal position am I just going mirror signal position well it's too late mirrors center and left signal is it safe too good 
now position. Mirrors and signal. Is it safe to? No, that car is really close. He's really sped up. Okay, so cancel the signal. Let's carry on round or put the right signal on. Carry on round. That's all it takes. But for the part two, do we find that that happens? Someone flashes the lights at us. Someone sounds the horn. We can assess ourselves and that will help us then to pass that part two.